Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence with me, I'm Sean, you already know that. Tonight we will be cooking a New Orleans favorite barbecued shrimp, which contrary to popular belief isn't barbecued at all. But first, as all good chefs know, we need a drink before we start cooking. Tonight's drink is champagne. Is that the label? There it is. One of my favorites is Frichonet Cordon Negro. Now champagne, to be called champagne, has to come from the Champagne region of France. And the other sparkling wine that's not from there is just sparkling wine. Now when you open wine, don't pop, fire the cork off into somebody's face or whatever. Gently twist it off and you'll hear it go, <coughs> my favorite sound. Because when you fire the cork off, there's no reason to do that because it just shows everybody you're a douche. There's no reason to do that unless you're James Bond and firing the cork will somehow save Norway or the Champagne region of France. In that case, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, don't be a douche. You pour it at an angle so you don't get nothing but fizz. Oh shit. Well. I might have fucked that up somehow. It's easy to do. Now people think champagne is like just for special occasions. It's not. It's it makes every day feel like a special occasion. You can get it cheaply. Like this bottle is only like nine ninety something, and you can get it less than that. Drink champagne out of a proper glass. This is a flute, and you also know those wide bowls that I grew up with. Well, I find out that those wide bowls are kind of not good for the actual properties of champagne. You want the bubbles to rise up and the bowls don't do that. Plus, these are a lot more stable because, you know, if you're moving around, it's a lot easier to do that and it's not going to go flying out everywhere. Whereas if you have that wide saucer, you, know, you turn around and you bump into the Queen of England or Nelson Mandela and you get champagne all over her tiara or his whatever suit. You just look like an idiot. So drink it out of a, of a flute. It's nicer. Alright, let's get cooking. We need shrimp. Here's some now. We need butter. Okay, we have our butter, we have our shrimp. We're going to need something to spice it up with. You need three things. I'm going to bring four out here. Garlic. This is granulated garlic. You can use garlic powder, fresh garlic, minced garlic, whatever. Just use lots of it. You need black pepper. You need rosemary. Well, you don't need rosemary, but it gives a really nice level of flavor to it. This is fresh rosemary I got out of my garden. I do something out of my garden all the time. And salt. You don't really need to do salt because usually the butter has a lot of salt in it, but you can. As you know, if you have high blood pressure and you can't have salt, I don't really care. Ooh. Well, that went down quick. Refill. All right. Oh, we're going to need something to put all this crap in. Just a regular pan. I mean, a baking pan or dish or... You can use one of these things. It's just a vessel. No one cares what it's in. Alright, this is one of the simplest things in the world and this shows you that anybody can cook well and it's not complicated. I don't know what it is about Louisiana seafood, but I mean other places have great seafood, but I don't know. Here here in New Orleans, it's just something special. I'm going to use a bigger dish. This isn't really a bigger dish. It's the same size, just different. Jesus. All right, that might work better. Let's do that. Spread them out. Did you want to get as many, you know, as much as, ew, easy for me to say, as many shrimp as possible exposed to the heat while they're in the oven. Oh, let's preheat our oven. Let's put it at uh, 
400. Nice round number. All right, this is one of the best parts. A friend of mine was like scandalized at this part of cooking. So we're gonna use a half a pound of butter. Not margarine, not, I can't believe it's not butter, not crock, shed crock pot or whatever the heck it is, it's not butter. Butter. If you wanna skimp on butter, and say, hey, it's too much fat, I can't eat it, I'm gonna watch my girlish figure. Then you know what, don't make barbecue shrimp because you're just gonna fuck it all up and you're gonna hate the barbecue shrimp because it's not gonna taste like it, it's gonna suck. Although who could really hate barbecue shrimp? I mean, even if it is screwed up. Two sticks of butter, that's a half a pound. Whole bunch of garlic. You can mince up some garlic, you can crush it, use real garlic or garlic powder. Point is, you use plenty of it. Black pepper. This takes a little while. Why grind up fresh black pepper? Well, when you use, you know, the pre-ground pepper dust, you can use it. It's not, I mean, it's not bad. But, but when you use fresh pepper, all the oils and volatiles that are in the pepper grounds, pepper corns, they've already kind of evaporated from the pepper dust. You don't get as much to the peppery goodness. Need a pepper break. Do not take the heads off. Don't shell the shrimp when you're making barbecue shrimp. Because all the head is how the, has all the shrimp, you know, organs and guts and all that horrible stuff you don't want to think about. When you put it in the oven with the butter and the garlic and the pepper, all those guts melt and they make some just, oh God, it's so good. Third ingredient you need is rosemary. Well, like I said, you don't need it, but adding it, it gives it this blast of flavor in your mouth when you eat it. Who doesn't like a blast in their mouth? Okay, well like, that's it. That's like, wasn't that the easiest thing in the world? Oh, the salt. That's like not even a tablespoon of salt. And you don't have to be Jewish to use kosher salt. Spices away. You gotta love a dish that you can just put away with one armful of shit. This is another option you can use. Worcestershire sauce, or as they say in England, Worcestershire sauce, because if you have 15,000 syllables, it's gotta be pronounced Worcester. Now we don't wanna have a big plate full of Worcester shrimp, so I'm just gonna use a little spritz of it here. Now generally you don't mix drinks. I don't mix drinks. You can, but you'll wind up throwing up all over the place later. What can you mix with champagne? Well, you can mix wine, particularly white wine, because the only difference between white wine and champagne is basically the bubbles. If you're a mere mortal like me and you're not some sort of vintner in France or a sommelier who wax on ad nauseum about the differences between white wine and champagne. Once it ferments and turns into not champagne anymore, it turns into brandy. So you can top champagne off with brandy and not throw the fuck up. And champagne drunk will kick your ass. So that best man at the wedding that had too much champagne, blame it on France. Because it sparkles. Sparkle. Okay, the oven's like taking its sweet fucking time to heat up here. That's what it's gonna look like beforehand. All of stuff everywhere. Oh, it's beeping, what do you know? Here in New Orleans, that's where I'm from, in case you didn't know. We always have great fresh seafood. If you live in, you know, Kansas or somewhere, all you have is red lobster. And, I mean, I know it's all you got, but I'm still sorry for you. It's no wonder y'all are steak and potatoes people. If you really want to live, you need seafood. And champagne. Mm. Okay, it's been 
maybe five minutes or so. Time to flip the shrimp. How do you know when it's time? The time isn't the factor. Let's see what the factor is. Hang on. All right. Now the shrimp are turning pink. That's when you start to flip them. Get the not cooked shrimp to the top and the starting to cook shrimp to the bottom. That's what we need. Shit, I did it again. Oh man. The thing that we're looking for isn't so much how long they've been cooking, but what color the shrimp are. Because they start to turn pink as they start to cook and then you, that's when you want to start flipping them. Why do shrimp turn pink? Why don't they turn shrimp? Why don't we say that shrimp turn shrimp as they're cooking? We use the word shrimp as a color. You know, well, what color did you paint your house? Oh, I painted this lovely shrimp color. Or, oh, I just love those shrimp colored high heel boots. They're fabulous. When they're actually pink. Now, when shrimp turn to the color that we're describing, we say they turn pink. That we don't say they turn shrimp. Shrimp turn pink. Shrimp is not a color. Shrimp is a crustacean, an invertebrate. It grows in the water. Shrimp. Okay, so I think they've turned all shrimp color. Not pink, apparently. Yeah, they look good. Look, while the oven's still hot, we're going to get some nice French bread because you got to have French bread to suck up all that sinful butter. Morals was never part of the 13 original colonies. It was never settled by the Dutch and the English and all the Puritans. So we never got that sort of puritanical outlook. Hence, we use lots of butter in our cooking because it, it tastes good. And just because something tastes good or feels good doesn't mean it's bad. All the people that settled up in New England and the Carolinas and the 13 original colonies, they were all kicked out of their countries, England and the Netherlands and wherever, for being too religious. Because they were like, oh, too much butter, that's sinful. Champagne, oh, that's sinful. New Orleans never had those people. We were settled by France and Spain and all the people that knew how to cook well and drink well and have a good time. So we have a great time now. It was passed down through the generations. That's why we have barbecued shrimp. See? Shrimp. Now, like I said, they're not barbecued. We just popped them in the oven with butter and garlic and rosemary and pepper. I'm not really sure how they got to be called barbecued shrimp. Because if you put them on the barbecue pit, then that's just grilled shrimp. Oh, it smells so good in here. I wish, you could, I wish we had like YouTube smell o vision So it's freaking easy. I mean, anybody can make that. A couple of pounds of shrimp, butter, salt, pepper, rosemary. You probably have it sitting in your fridge right now. I mean, maybe not the shrimp. Especially if you live in, you know, Oklahoma or somewhere. But, whatever. Did I just do that? Girl. Alright, let me show you how to eat a barbecue shrimp. It's very easy. If you ever come to Louisiana, you can apply the same technique to crawfish. Pull the head off. Common sense. You got these little leggy things. You just start at the legs and pull it off. Unwrap it like that. There's your shrimp with the tail on it. Pinch the tail. And we got barbecue shrimp. And you eat it. Oh. You take your bread. And just dip it in all that butter, garlic, rosemary, pepper stuff. Mmm. Oh God, so good. Thank you all for watching. Y'all have a great night. Enjoy your barbecue shrimp. And if all you have is red lobster around you, God bless you.